All right, so I'd like to call uh, the meeting to order for the replacement fee recommendation committee. Um, I know we're holding this meeting today because the agriculture committee met yesterday. Um, and may or maybe they didn't. Um, we, we didn't, but I pulled the committee members. They, as far they as opined the resource. yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yes, they opined. Thank you. They opined yesterday. Okay. Okay, yes. good. Because I know there was another. There was another email from John, and I'm not sure. I'm not 100 sure. I'll be able to find that one. Um, oh, okay. There we go. I do find it. Um, so I you have... pulled the members. Uh, Y'all yes. want to say it? Uh, okay. I, uh, Tuesday night, I had the best of intentions to have a Zoom meeting with my agricultural committee, and for one reason or another, technical problems stopped our zoom meeting so because we didn't hold a december meeting because i wouldn't have had a quorum i pulled the members just so i didn't i had something to report to this committee tonight so based on a poll of the members and i talked to uh, there's one member i didn't get a hold of he didn't call me back yet but um the majority of the members that i talked to all support the fee schedule that was talked about at our November RCC, RRC meeting. So that was the one that was developed with the tax collector, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they support that, that fee schedule. Um, they also support, the majority support the exemption for dual use projects. I had one dissension and the dissension was because um, uh, of the loss of a valuable resource. They thought that anybody that, that's, that's um, whether it's dual use or not, should be paying the fee. But the majority of the committee felt that the exemption was applicable to anybody that was using dual use solar. And the final thing I have to say before I give up the floor is um, I need to leave at 6.30 tonight. Well, let's aim to get the meeting done by 6.30. Yeah, I thought so too, but you know, let's throw it out there okay. so everybody knows. Um, and then uh, somebody might have to remind me which, what is the fee schedule established by the planning and select board? I don't think the planning board oh, oh, and the okay. select board have, have done a fee schedule. The only oh, okay. thing we talked about it that is- That was their, that, your formula. Okay. Yeah, um, see, I thought It's that was not it. really a, it's a, it's a, framework i guess uh, okay 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 All right. the difference being that the, the values that we suggested as the agcom were were unsupported whereas the the ones that you guys developed have a, a you know are defensible right hopefully right. <laughs> yeah okay yeah um all right, so now I'm looking at the things that Hannah and um, and Judy sent out before the meeting. Um, well, I think maybe we should. That's that's trying to put into words something we haven't quite gotten to yet. So maybe. Okay, so can uh, is who would be in a good position to kind of remind us um, where we are on the various proposed, I'll call them fee schedules, um, but ways of determining the fee. Would that be something you could do, Judy? Sure, I'll try. Um, I think there's the one that we have talked about is to take the market value as prepared by the Board of Assessors or the Assessor's Office for the median market value for all of the parcels in Chapter 61A and 61 the difference between that, well, no, I, let me rephrase it. To take the market value, the difference between the market value of these parcels and their valuation is determined by the chapter values provided by the state. And to use the median of those as the per acre fee value. <laughs> okay, so um, just if I can restate it, there's a we're taking a 
two things and taking their difference first. So difference between the chapter value assigned by the state and the market value of whatever plot it is in 61 or 61A. Take the difference first. The difference per acre. Per acre, on a per, per acre, acre basis. Yeah. Which occurs to me is not in my write-up. Right. Good thing okay. you say these things. So per, okay, we're gonna take those differences and there's gonna be a number for each one of the parcels. We're gonna take that group of differences and take the median. Okay. That. Um, and let that be the per acre value of the fee. Yep. Okay. So the little engineer in me is writing down the fee is equal to the median of uh, market value minus uh, state value. Per acre. And, per acre. And these per are acre. all on a per acre. Right. So the per acre fee is the median of the difference in market value and state value all both of those being per acre. Everything is in units of dollars per acre. And the value for fiscal year 22 would be 41 or nine, or maybe round to $4,100 per acre. Okay. And that, if I recall, came kind of close or at least not too, too far away from many of the values that we first looked at when we were just thinking about what's the, uh, how would we replace, because it's a replacement fee, what would be the cost to replace? What would be the cost of a uh, pounds share of an APR to put some other land in conservation? I think we those didn't. Those varied a lot though, right? Those varied Those a lot. varied huge, hugely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we never got very good data for conservation mm -hmm. land and timber land. So, yeah. Um, but this, okay. this approach has the advantage of being, as John said, defensible. Right. These are numbers on which actual transactions occur. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Taxes are paid. Um, if you go out a chapter, you, you mm -hmm. play the makeup based on the market value. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, these are in a sense official figures. Right. I mean, they're, they're right. real. And using the median, Helped, um, helped kind of even out some of the, what you could see as perceived or real inequities that are based on the land's location. Like some land is valued, has a higher market value just because it's borders yeah, okay. and, or, you know, the, and there's, an, there's a number of things that are a little arbitrary. And by taking the median, we sort of even that out a bit. Conceptually, I think we're trying to approximate the value of land that would be preserved as opposed to trying to replicate the value of yeah. the existing parcel. Yeah. I mean, we don't know which parcel will be preserved. So this median would be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, and I guess the other thing it was, it was that um, this fee would be more of a bargain if the land had a greater market value, right? And that would tend to mean you, you're you not putting these into, you know, really deep, remote, you know, farmland. You're putting it in, you know, something that's closer to five and 10 actually has um, a fee that's a better bargain, so to speak, by, uh, because of high market value compared to state value. Maybe. Maybe that's not really a consideration. I thought that was a. a I neat think thing. we 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 thought that there was enough vari variability in in the particular parcels that we weren't really trying to particularize that way. Right. But. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so the other like, oh, the other issue is how to treat dual use solar. Yeah and whether it should be exempt or not. Um, the write-up I sent proposed that the land that actually remains in production for farming and dual use solar be exempt, but the land that's sort of appropriated for the solar panels not be. 
Um, yeah. Which is, but what the what the Ag Commission recommended was was that it all be exempt. So, so I think the decision is is anything exempt? Is it all exempt, or is the part that keeps being productive for farmer timberland exempt? Well, if it's dual use, then the then all of the land where the solar panels is is being used for both farming. Well, I mean, not necessarily. Not well um, under the definitions for dual use. Yeah, that, it says no more a, than it says no more than fifty percent of the land can be shaded by the panels. Right, but shaded. So land conceptually, is still, conceptually, fifty percent could be productive, and the other half could could not be. Oh, that's um, it might be that it might be that a farmer chose to you know plant the other fifty percent. And technically not everything can be grazed upon because the panels are mounted and the animals can't get close if you're grazing. So no, I don't think it's true. If it's all productive, then if it's all being used, then what, everything would be exempt. If it's not my understanding under my under my proposal. Dual use means um, that not every you don't have to have sunshine hitting every speck of the ground for that speck of the ground to be productive from a farmer's point of view. In fact, right. if you're raising animals, it's nice to have that shade. Some plants actually like a little bit of shade and uh, you can graze animals under solar panels. Well, uh, in fact, I, on the hot days, they, they like to actually stand in the shade a little bit more than standing in the sun. Well, I think we're trying to define how somebody puts dual use together um, if in I, fact it's all under, under the definition. way I worded it and it needn't be adopted, but if the way I worded it, if it's all actually used for farming, then it would all be exempt. If it's not all used for farming, but it meets the criteria of dual use in Massachusetts, then some of it would not be. Um, yeah. but, but that's, oh, okay. that's one option. So you're, and, and the other thing that I'm hearing is you're um, kind of putting another layer of granularity on it in the sense that you might have a parcel with, I don't know, I'll just use round numbers, a 20 acre parcel of farmland and maybe five acres has solar panels that only cover 50% of it. So you're saying the fee only applies to five acres not to the whole 20 acres. I'm not clear with five acres have. And like if the solar panels are not on, like if, you, if they're in one particular portion of a parcel, they don't cover the entire parcel at any percentage. They don't, they... I think in that case, they wouldn't, it wouldn't apply anyway for, for those other, for the It'd other. Be the acre five acres that the panels were on. Yeah, it's only the five acres that the panels are on that the that the okay. would apply to in any event. Okay, so we have to make that clear then. Um, well, no, it's it's the okay. acre, it's the way it's phrased in the bylaw is that it's the acreage that's taken for the for the solar facility. Okay, and then. Um, we could waive that fee if it's dual use to the extent that it's in production. It's, that's that's one approach. We could waive it for the whole facility or we could not waive it at all. Yeah, I do want to, I think we, we should press for the dual use uh, having an exemption. Um, I think that you know, to, if, if our goal is to keep farmland in production, then let's incentivize it. Um, if somebody finds it that not do that, then we won't give them the incentive. But uh, I think that's um, I, I think it's it's a good thing to incentivize. It's not a huge thing if it's a few if it's five thousand dollars for an acre, and these projects cost a heck of a lot more than that. And that's going to be one small thing that helps. Yeah. Small thing's going to help uh, a local farmer maybe make the decision to keep that in production. And I'm, I'm great with that. that. That's the opinion that our chairman 
Doug Coldwell has very similarly. In the example that he used of a practical dual use solar is his far friend's farm up in uh, Putney, Vermont, the Harlows, where their solar farm has free range chickens on it. So that's that's their dual use is they, is they, they have solar panels, but they also graze in this case, free range chickens. Mm. I would buy their eggs if they were a little closer. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay. Well, George, you haven't, uh, you've done a bit of yesing and humming and, and nodding your head. Um, <laughs> maybe uh, well, you have a moment to chime in. I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion also that uh, dual use should be exempted. I, um, I, I, see a lot of your, your reasoning behind that from the Ag Commission and from you, Joyce. And uh, I'm also thinking about implementation of this and uh, how granular you want to get and who determines what the fee is going to be and how you're going to negotiate um, um, with these uh, uh, people coming in to put, put in the installations over how much, what it, exactly what acres are going to be dual use, what or not. And, uh, and the fee becomes more negotiable then. I, I think if we keep it simple, on a per acre fee basis, yeah. um, at, at least to, to run this out for the first year or two and see how it goes, if it goes, um, if it comes up, then um, that, that's probably the, the soundest way to go. Oh. Um, if, we, if we start getting it into, into particularity, as you said, Judy, with, with different pieces of property and, and looking at uh, at uh, fees that are varying by the project or by yeah, the property, then, then would, it just opens up a whole yeah. Such a headache. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hannah, you're nodding every so often, and and humming and so on. Do you want? Uh, do you want to chime in too? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd just like to echo what George said. Um, I think that simplicity is key um, for accessibility's sake, as well as for um, enforcement's sake. I think it'll make it a lot easier. Um, yeah, I think that uh, dual use should probably be exempted from um, the fee just because, I mean, I think that um, it would make it more, yeah, I don't think I have anything new to offer to the conversation. I agree with a lot of what has already been said. Okay, well, it sounds like we've got a consensus here about the fee. Um, one question I thought of while you were chatting was, um, when we put this into words, do we need to say something like the fee will be reevaluated yearly as a part of the, uh, you know, I don't know where in the assessor cycle that should happen, <clears throat> but um, uh, presumably you set the fee and you set the date when it changes for the next year. Um, and I don't know what reasonable values would be for those dates, um, but you might have a better idea or could talk to the assessors and ask i know the i know that the state publishes their values prior to the start of the fiscal year um oh, i don't know how quick, i don't know how quickly the market values are available when we talked to um cynthia hannah it was october mm -hmm. And she certainly had no trouble pulling them up then. Um, so if we thought um, November 1st might be a date that we could reliably have all the information we need from both the state and the market values. Well, I we think maybe the thing to do is if you want to have a particular date, um, find out from from Cynthia when, when the market values are available and, and when she can produce the spreadsheet and add a few weeks onto that or something. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking. November 1st is into the next month, but we let's put that in sort of as a placeholder. And if she comes back and says, no, I really need till November 15th or November 30th, then- Well, if it's if the year starts on July 1st, you're giving her a lot of time. <laughs> well, you just, but you just told me that the market value uh, stuff doesn't come in till October. No, I said, that's when we met with her. I have no idea when when she has it. Oh, okay. Could be, could be June 30th for all I know. Okay, so a date 
later to be named. Um, so I've got two dueling drafts. Okay. Well, maybe the, rather than So. There, there are two. There are two kind of issues. One was that, as I said, I I didn't exempt everything. Um, the other was that I don't think. I think that Hannah's draft used the median value for the parcel. Yeah, as opposed um, to the aggregate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think my language was incorrect. Actually, I think I, I misunderstood and didn't write the correct language. So yeah. I would. I I would use Judy's for that. Mm -hmm. Right, because I think this says the difference between one thing and you don't say the other thing that it's the difference between. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I, I thought Judy's was, was, was fine with, with the addition of the um, per acre uh, okay. aspect of it and um, exempting um, dual use. Okay. So, so we just you... exempt all dual use. That's mm -hmm. easily adjusted. Hannah nicely put in um, an intent paragraph, which is something you have when you do a regular, a new regulation or a new bylaw. Um, I honestly don't know about the appropriateness of that in this context, because what we're recommending is just something that another bylaw asked to be created. And I don't think we're really in a position to speak to the intent in this group. So I'd just leave that out because I'm not sure it's necessary. I would too. We had discussion of it in our earlier meetings and, and it's in the minutes, but that was more for clarification um, of our discussion. So we, so we knew yeah. what the foundation was. Um, I included that because Brian recommended that we include it, but if it's uh, already reflected in the town bylaws, then I think you're right. I think it's unnecessary. Well, it's not really reflected in the bylaws, but I don't think it's our role to, to establish the intent if the select board wants to. Well, this was also written as a select board regulation instead of a bylaw. Yeah. Well, then maybe I, I'm just uncomfortable us recommending the wording. Yeah, it, it's a regulation for implementation of the bylaw. Yeah. Regulation. And then. I mean, I think we can recommend the fee methodology, which is what we're advised right. to do, but. But. Um, I. The, the intent belongs to the bylaw. Yeah. I mean, the intent statement could just reference the bylaw. But this is our intention. We're trying to co uh, comply with our own bylaw. I suggest we leave this up to Judy. What's yeah. your concern? I'm I'm concerned that we were we were asked to develop a way to mechanism a dollar fee to advise the select board. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yep. And oh. that's our charge. Right. Okay. So they can either accept or reject it. Right. So, and then so the they, they, they don't have to take our recommendation for the fee, right. but, but the bylaw re requires that there be input from, right. from the Ag Commission and the Conservation well, Commission. It, it might and be, that, yeah, it might be that the select board will want to have the intention clearly stated. Yeah, when, well, I think but, it's but that you're right that this committee doesn't have to uh, approve that particular language. We can say we yeah. don't object to it, but um, we I don't, our job is to know, if, if Hannah wants speech. to present it to the select board for their adoption, fine. But I don't yeah. I don't really feel it should come from us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm running down to the end of my time here, yeah. and I have two questions. Question one, or statement one, is Hannah, thank you for the minutes. Those were very helpful. Yes. And uh, two is we've covered a lot of ground here tonight. Do you need motions on the stuff that we've talked about? I think we we need. Yeah, I think so too. 
Um, and also we need a motion to approve the minutes actually while you're still here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Second. Um, okay, all those in favor, Judy? Aye. John? Yep. George? Aye. Me? Yes. Okay. I said yes too. <laughs> yeah, you did. I know, I and yes, I count them the same. Sure. Um, so so uh, I, I will and make a second motion. Yes, do it. The second motion is I make a motion that any Purdue, any, any landowner that is employing dual use solar projects be exempt from the resource replacement fee on the acreage that's devoted to dual use solar. I would amend that to say the facility or the project, the um, developer of the solar facility. Yeah, okay, we're not wordsmithing it. He's saying the acreage, per acre fee, acreage okay. is at the, yep. yeah. so I would second that. Okay, um, then let's take a vote. All those in favor, I'll go around the same way. Judy? Aye. John? Yes. George? Aye. Me? Yes. Okay. Um, and then I guess the last motion would be about how the fee would be established. Um, and I'm willing to let anybody make that motion, <laughs> although I'm happy to do it as well. I have it written down in front of me. So why don't I move the language that the resource replacement fee shall be equal to the difference between the median market value per acre of all Waitley parcels in chapter 61 and 61A for that year as established by the Waitley Board of Assessors and the median value of those parcels per acre published by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue for the chapter land for that fiscal year of acres to be occupied by the solar facility and uh, yeah, then that's where it's supposed to end. Okay, that's a combination of Hannah's and Judy's wording. So that's the motion. Second. Um, okay, all those in favor, Judy? Aye. John? Aye. George? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Okay. Um, so you know, if anything, before I leave, those are the big motions. Go ahead. George, you had a motion as well, or you had a, a really good idea that I thought should be presented as a motion, if you can remember the wording that you used. I'm, I'm not clear on what you're referring to, John. Um, hmm. Can't think of it off the top of my head, but there were a couple of good ideas that were floating around the room. So. And on that final note, I'm going to bid adieu to the committee. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, John. Okay. Good Thanks, night. John. Thank Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay. I don't think we need um, much more here, especially nothing that we'll um, vote on. Um, but I think the the one thing that this committee doesn't have to decide on the date. I think that we're willing to go with whatever is a reasonable date. But I think we should put in here. Uh, a date um, before it goes to the select board. I don't think we need to meet to put that date in. I think Anna can put in the date. Yep. Um, for that. I think Anna can wordsmith our respective documents too. Yeah. So um, uh, or I can just, I, I put, I took, I cut from your document, put it into Hannah's um, and that what I read out loud is what I had. You probably recognize some of each of your <laughs> your verbiage um uh and it may be that we've got to put in you could send it to me for the minutes that would help <laughs> and oh, me okay. too for reference yeah. please that would be great yeah okay so and i will take that part and make it bold italics so that you'll see that and uh if, like for example hannah's also has some language i didn't write like per definition the mgl 2225 cmr blah blah um, that may have to be in there. I don't, we don't, I don't think we. I used a shorter form of that, but anyway, something like that we can. Right. Uh, the last phrase is the blank board shall conduct an annual review 
of this select board regulation at an advertised public meeting in order to assess the select board regulation. So is that what we're talking about? I don't think that's allowed under the bylaw, actually. Well, we, we need to put in something about this fee gets re, re the, you know, the number gets reestablished every year. Well, I, I so said that might be, I don't know if that requires a public meeting with a public hearing. Well, I think that, I think that the select board has to approve the new number every year, but I think it can be just a matter of the assessor providing the data. Right. So then the, the language that's at the bottom of, I'm looking at Hannah's now about the annual review that pro that verbiage will probably get changed yeah so. i don't think yeah i think just i don't think it's necessary one i the bylaw requires select board to establish it and input from two boards not one but i think it's i don't think that that kind of review is necessary every year so we if, yeah. as long as the number itself gets reset yeah. so we can review it whenever the hell we want but we don't have to review it every year no but i think you you want to use the, the right. current we want to update the number and yeah. i don't know if that requires a new vote each year every time we come up with a new number but that may end up just being sort of a pro forma vote we have to take every year to make it legal yeah well that's a question for yeah so we'll rely on hannah to sort that last paragraph out uh, properly. Okay, so I'm taking this file. Uh, I'm going to save as uh, resource replacement fee select board draft two um, uh, revision one. Uh, and I'm going to put that on my desktop so I can find it. Okay. Um, and it has other verbiage of Hannah's in there, but the bold italics is the part um that you'll want um hannah and judy and uh george oh i gotta spell it e-o uh, you know, not gonna come up so george owens and i'll go ahead and send it to john divine at gmail okay um I'll call it the latest verbiage, knowing that it's not going to be the final verbiage. I'll put that in uh, an email right now. And I'm hitting send. So this is now more or less off this committee's plate. <laughs> um, and a little bit all. on Hannah's plate, but I hope that the things are straightforward, I think, at this point that need to yeah. be added and checked. Um, yeah. And it's really the select board will need to deal with whatever uh, other things there are in there, not us. The bold italics are, that was our job and we did our job. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Everybody well done team. On the back, I would have you on the <laughs> back. Thank you. Is, oh, you. Oh, that stretch feels good. That stretch feels good. Yeah. You've got a zillion things already for next the next select board meeting. So I take it we're naming for the one after that. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, got, we we've got a bit going on, but you know, that's our job. And Hannah seems to be involved at in all of it. <laughs> got my fingers in all the projects now. <laughs> you know what? What would we do if we didn't have Hannah? <laughs> we would. I mean, none of these things would get done. So. <laughs> That's that's my uh, that's my thought. Oh, but I mean, we were normally we would have had a meeting last night, but we didn't because there was a, a hearing. And boy, I have never been thanked so many times for showing up to a hearing and giving some comments than I was at last night's meeting. Boy, people are just starving for input from the public. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 I mean, if I had like sent them, I can't to, say that the planning board feels that way, but I'm glad. <laughs> The OT does. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. So maybe they're still on two meetings feeling sensitive time. from yeah from South Deerfield. Yeah, yeah, that was it, it. Was for me, it was hard because I was like there was another meeting and I was just waiting for the comment period on one meeting and I had to leave the other meeting and get 
anyway. <laughs> I'm glad well, it was. Thank you all. I, I think well. it's a good solution. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. I'd, uh, I'd enter a, a motion to adjourn if anybody would. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor, Judy? Aye. George? Aye. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Good night, everybody. Have a okay, great good night. rest of your good January. Night. Keep Hopefully those, we uh, don't have sweaters to meet on, you know? Okay. The sweaters and the extra double layers on, you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Stay warm. Thank you. Bye. Bye.